We'll start a new chapter called the loop characteristics now. <coughs> Load characteristics. So, the first thing which will be coming in the load characteristics is the load curve. <coughs> Since we know that during a day we also consume a different load and different times. In the morning time when we are uh, uh, just uh, awake, at that time the electricity consumption is very less. We go to office at that time, we are using fan and, and uh, uh, tube lights and uh, lighting arrangements or ACs. In the evening, uh, everything is lit and uh, we are using uh, electricity on uh, in the full flight. And Street lights are there, and parking lights, spark lights are there, and we have uh, the whole room is lit by the lamps, by the tube lights, and all that. So, uh, one can understand that during uh, the whole 24 hours, we are consuming a different type of load at the time. We can uh, have a general idea in that case that is called the load curve. So, if, if this is load during the day and this is the time in 24 hours, suppose. So, in the morning we will be having small load, in the evening it will be more and in, at the night it will be less and almost a constant. So, we can have a different type of load. Uh, we can have a characteristic of different load curve also. We can have a load curve of like this also. I, anything could be a load curve. So what exactly the load curve says? Load curve is exactly the load versus time. So anything which shows load versus time is called the load curve. So what is the use of the load curve? There are several uses of the load curve uh, which we can discuss, which we will be discussing. But if we look at the load curve right now, if the red curve, if I see, if I talk about the red curve right now, I can say that uh, this is the maximum demand which I am looking for. This will be the maximum demand of my load curve. And this would be the almost a constant load which is always present in the system. Likewise, I can have the average demand also approximately here or the red curve. So from the load curve, I can have first of things called the load variations. Load variations are very much important. Uh, uh, the study of the load variation is very much important in the design of the power system such that when we have a power system generating plant, so uh, since we have discussed this thing that rather than having a single uh, unit, suppose this is the maximum demand of 100 megawatt, right? Suppose and the average is 50 and the minimum is 30 suppose. So <clears throat> rather than making a 100 megawatt power system, power plant, I can have an average power plant that is 50 megawatt power plant or I can do one thing, I can have a, a 10 megawatt of 10 uh, different generating plant, uh, 10 generating units such that it is maximum demand is uh, fulfilled by the same system only or I can have an interconnection of the system also. If I talk about the 10 megawatt of 10 systems to uh, have a 100 megawatt of total power plant. So I can say that at this time the three uh, 
my three generator will be working continuously and for some time <coughs> as the load is increasing I will switch on the generator, switch on, keep on switching on the generator and at this point I will uh, put on all the generators into the system so that uh, it will be producing 100 megawatt and when it, the load duration is going down the load is going down I can have the cutting of the my generating plants and I can have a uh, base load which is the 30 megawatt hour at all time so uh, this is one of the reasons that uh, rather than putting a 100 megawatt uh, direct generator I can have a 30, uh, 10, 10 megawatt of uh, 10 generator so that the, as the load comes we will put on the generator into the system as the load is out we are putting our generator uh, off to the system so that the maximum load factor is there. We will be discussing about the load factor also. So we are talking about the load duration, load uh, uh, variation right now. So we can have the load variation and according to that uh, we can plan for the power system. From this curve I can also say that I can have the maximum demand and the average demand. So I can have the maximum demand and the average demand. What is the use of the maximum demand? So the maximum demand will be uh, this demand which is right now the 100 megawatt and the average demand is right now the 50 megawatt. So I can have the design of the power system in such a way that it will be able to supply the 100 megawatt power also and it, with efficiency and it will be producing 50 megawatt of electricity or 50 megawatt of power uh, with efficiency and with the reliability also. So the maximum demand and the average demand are very much important during the design of the power system plant. <coughs> Coming to the parts of this load curve is the, the area under the load curve gives the total energy generated. So if I say that this area of the red curve which will be giving me This is the area under my load curve which is coming so it will be giving me the total energy generated. So area under the load curve is equal to the total energy generated. Apart from that, one more thing comes, the area under the load curve and the area of the total rectangle is also important, right now the area of this rectangle is somewhat this much. So the area of the load curve and area divided by the area of the total rectangle gives the load factor of the system. So area under load curve divided by the area of this rectangle is equals to load factor. What is this load factor? <coughs> load factor is the average demand upon the maximum demand, which will be same. So, but just for uh, understanding this thing, what is the load factor here? What is load factor as called? Load factor is called, called as the average demand upon the maximum demand, or the ratio of the average demand to the maximum demand is called as the load factor. So, so we can have the utilities of the load curve also that. Right? Uh, we can have the total installed capacity or we can have when the generation plant is under process or when the, the gestation period is to be decided and 
according to that, we have to decide the installed capacity of the system. So at that time, we will be looking at the load curve and we can say the what should be the installed capacity of the system. Apart from that, it also gives the most economical size of the conductor, such that uh, the conductor will be of uh, which size uh, uh, it will give the economical size of the conductor by Kelvin's law, uh, which is which we have studied Kelvin's law, uh, modified Kelvin's law, Kelvin's law. According to that, we will have the most economical size of the conductor by the load curve. So this is also important. <coughs> So the first thing which we can think of from the load curve is the installed capacity. Second thing which we can understand from the load curve is the most economical size of the conductor. Third thing which we can uh, say about the conductor is the generating cost uh, about the power system. With the generating cost we can find out from the root curve. How the generating cost is taken up? <clears throat> Since I said that uh, I will be having uh, 30 megawatt of system over here always present in the system. So that will be the base load and the peak load right now will be the one 100 megawatt and average is 50. So rather than designing a system for 100 megawatt directly, I can have my power plant of 50 megawatt such that it will be able to uh, cope up with the average demand of the system. Total my, uh, if this is for my city, so I can say that for my city, 50 megawatt is enough. So I will be designing a system of 50 megawatt and this part which is more than my 50 megawatt, this part which is more than my 50 megawatt part right now, I can have two things rather than uh, having a 100 megawatt system because see we can see that this part is always empty, this part. This part is always empty, this part, hold this part, hold this part is empty. So we can say that rather if we design a system of 100 megawatt directly, which is the peak load, what will happen? Most of the system, most of the power plant will be shut and uh, it will not be in use and uh, the expenditure, expenditure cost of the system will be higher and the capacity of the system uh, will be of higher cost. And the generation cost will again increase. So rather than having this system of 100 megawatts, I have 50 megawatts system that will decrease my total capacity since that it depends on the capacity of the system. That if the capacity of the system is increasing, what obviously the cost will be increasing in the installation. And the installation cost is high, and we can have the generating cost is also high because we have to take that amount from the generator power plant only. So one thing which can be done is that I can have a 50 megawatt system and the rest 50 megawatt which is right now this this blue part which is we, we are seeing right now we can have the interconnection of the system such that when we are in need of the extra power we can uh, import it from some other station which is of higher capacity which is having uh, extra power, uh, extra surplus power. So we can have this extra surplus power from them so that the generating cost of my total system will be less because my generated, my installed capacity is less right now. And one more thing will come, the load factor of my total system will be high at that time and I am using the, uh, my system to the fullest so that the, uh, nothing will be uh, kept idle, everything will be working. So that will be also affecting the generating cost at that time. <coughs> so 
The fourth thing, very important thing, which I'll be having from my load curve would be as the operating schedule. Operating schedule, as we have discussed this thing, just that since I can have a different type of uh, uh, system, I can have a 50 megawatt system and I rest uh, which is above 50 megawatt uh, when it is required at that time and we at that time we can have the interconnection. So I can have a 50 megawatt system and I can uh, have 10, uh, uh, 10 cross 10 megawatt system also I can have 5 into 10, 5 into 10 cross 10 megawatt system also. So it depends on the design of the system and it depends upon the uh, use of the systems uh, such that the economical is very much important. So operating schedule in this when I am talking about the 10 into 10 megawatt system at that time the, I will be switching on the system when, when they are required. I'll, at least 3 would be always present if 10 into 10 megawatt system is concerned. And then four, five, six, so on. Ten, all, all ten will be under uh, the working condition at my peak load. And as the load is going down, I can have removal of my generators from the system. So I can have the operating schedules in such a way that the, uh, the demand and the um, fulfillment of the demand is balanced. That will be the load curve. So from this load curve, I can have a different curve which is called as the load duration curve also. 